Uh, this week's lesson, I decided to do this a little early. Hopefully, uh, we'll get it done in time. I'm using a different method um, since QuickTime's been messing up on me after like 15 minutes and I have to go back and splice everything. I'm actually, uh, I've got QuickTime loaded, but it's not recording. What is recording is uh, a screen capture software. So, and I've had good uh, experience with it. It's called Snagit. So, I'm going to screenshot or screen capture this. Um, lesson and see how it turns out you know should, hopefully the quality will not be affected too bad but um, last week we covered uh, about working on wildwood flowers still working on them and then we got to the second part Also talked about I'll give you the assignment to practice that E7. And if you wanted to, you could put a G there. Usually, I typically don't do that though because it's a lot of movement. So what I'll usually do is. Keep that A minor shape and then lift my first finger to get that, that walk down. D7, A minor. Keep the A minor shape, lift the first finger. And then the, the F. Little hammer on there. What I decided to do this time is uh, work on. Uh, I'm gonna keep my cat in line over here. She's chewing on my case. Anyway, I decided to work on today. We since we've been working on down strokes most of the time, down picks and things like that. I figured we could work on actually maybe incorporating some C licks. And one of them is a very cool one uh, that Tony Rice uses a lot. Part of that C, C scale, you can't go any lower than the E note there. Hold on a sec. Quit that. No. I'll shut you in that case. Okay, so what we're going to do here is this involves the down up stuff. And um, here's where we come in. Like if we're just doing the first part. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. I forgot that it's in the way, so we'll do that. There we go, that way it won't be in your way. Um, so we've got, uh, let's see if I was to count that. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and one, two, three. See, and four, one. Okay, so that'll be. Can't do this at the same time, but basically, and what that is is you're going to start that with an upstroke, and that it's going to become difficult, you know, just a little bit because because you're coming down this downstroke and then coming up after your hands all the way down here to that very top E string. And it'll be you'll you'll want to come across it and come over it, but if you do that, the rest of the notes will kind of be you know out of sync. So what you want to do is what I usually do is I try not to strum all the six strings. I will strum and just strum like the top strings, and then skip those and try to try to do that. So you could do this just for practice. Try 
come up on that upstroke there, okay? And that way, when you do that, you're gonna kind of lift up the rest of these fingers because they have to go over here and start working on this, this shape here. So I just practice doing, maybe you can just do that much instead of. So I'll just go. And what happens here is you can leave this shape because you're gonna have to come right back to it. But when you get ready to actually do the picking action, you're gonna to need to move these fingers to where they're available here, starting on that top E string. Okay, so and that's gonna be up down, right? So that's up, down, and the rest is going to be up, down, up, down, up, and the last note's going to be a, a down. So it's going to look like this, up, first fret E, third fret, it's going to be an upstroke, down on that A, and then two, three, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, open one, three, open two, three. So that's on the E string, the A string. This is why you practice that. Really slow, you don't have to rush it. And I'm not tensing up on my, you know, picking hand. This is a really good exercise to practice to get that picking down because up to now it's all been down, 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 down. So there's not been a lot of uh alternate picking stuff going on until right now. So this is one lick that I recommend doing. And so let's insert this, you know, basically when you get to the end where that G comes in. So you got like two beats there. One, two, three. About three beats. So you got time to put a little lick in there, whether it's on low part or a high end and I'll show you a high end lick here in just a second but let's insert that so far and see what we can come up with at the end of each phrase in the first half of the song <clears throat> and at the very last ending phrase when it goes to now what I recommend doing is practicing it like that inserting it in every single time but obviously you're not going to um, insert it every single time when you're actually playing it this is just for practicing purposes and getting you used to strumming and then on the fly all of a sudden smaller movements using uh, picking techniques. Uh, you'd want to uh, vary it up, obviously. You'd, you'd be like, once you get better at that one lick, you'd be going... And then do something different the next time. So at the very end, you kind of do a turnaround and tag it. Okay, so we've worked on that. And also, the other thing I was going to point out was... Um, is using the... Uh, don't forget to use that as well, because you don't want to have just a... It sounds a lot better if, if you break it up. So 
So that's the first lick. The first lick is, and I recommend you practicing it like this. Now notice when I hit that last note, I'm hitting the whole shape so that I can be there like a split second before I need to strum. You always want to be where you want to be ahead of where you need to be, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, the trickiest part, like I said, is coming up and hitting just one note instead of going. Because so, you got to lift up when you're hitting this note so that your finger's going to be ready. And if you hit more than one string, you're going to hit. You're going to hit the A string and the D string. It's going to sound terrible. There's some different variations on this you can do, <clears throat> uh, such as and that is uh, it's kind of the same. You're going to start directly instead of this first finger, you're going to start directly with the ring finger here on the third fret of the E string, and then just walk it up the A string, open one, two, three, and that's going to be alternate picking. So it's going to be up, down, and then the A string, up, up, down, up, down. And sometimes people do this, but it sounds out of, that note is not in the C, C chord, so uh, it sounds out of place, so I just typically go with either the first fret or, or you can do it a little faster and have a few extra notes. You're going to do the same thing as you did in the last one, all the way up to the A string, and then up on the D, and then down on the D of the second fret. Okay, so you got several different options there. Uh, so the next lick I was going to go over is uh, the same deal, but it's going to be a higher lick. And this is more of an intermediate thing. It also involves using some of the alternate picking stuff. We're going to try to get your hand used to that right now. I think it's a good time to do that. So you've got a lot of stuff up to this point. Uh, you've got the that kind of arpeggiated strumming. You've got now you've got this, which is kind of getting you ready to go into the alternate picking. Um, we went over, you know, so that's another thing I'm doing when I get to that E7 is there's not really, you don't want to really strum. So usually I just pick. stuff covered just on this one tune so far uh, but the other the other uh, technique I was going to do is something that will actually focus on a couple things one is it will continue to focus on your picking but even more important up to this point we've only been working with notes around the C chord and I said that most of the notes that you want to find in a song can be found around the, the same frets um, as the chord that you're playing. For example, we have that open G, we got the second fret G, we got the first uh, fret here on the B, we got the open string the D, we got the third fret of the D, and we've got the second fret of the a string now we've got this note and now we've learned that we've got several other notes right here so we could use all these different notes within that 
uh, shape. But now we're going to work on a leak that causes you to go outside of this C pos position. It kind of got, forces you out of that comfort zone. So you got to be used to realizing that not only, as I've said before, don't be stuck to the shape when you're trying to play a, a lick. Like for example, this lick here required me to lose the whole entire shape. My fingers have to be free now so that I can play that. So that I can do that, okay? So I'm not stuck to this shape. And that's a, a real um, common mistake that uh, most beginners make is they'll, they'll, they think they gotta play everything around this and use all their hands. You, you, you can be totally free to uh, lose any fingers that are not required when you're strumming. Yes, it's good to have some of them down if you're strumming, like if I'm strumming a G string, it's good to have that first note down so that if I accidentally hit, uh, my, if, if my pick is a little bit more powerful than I intended to, then we have a, a note within the chord there, which is in this case a C on the first fret of the B string. If I didn't do that, uh, it would sound more like a G chord. If I wanted to have the C characteristics, then yes, I would have that C note there. So you can, you don't have to worry about keeping a chord shape down. <clears throat> in the next, in this lick that I'm talking about here, we're going to actually slide up and not even have a chord shape any, anywhere similar to the C until we get to the end of that lick. And this lick will be inserted at the same spot as this other one. When you have that little bit of time there with playing that C. So, and this was going to sound like this. This is going to be a, a very classic bluegrass lick. And what you're going to do is you're going to come down. Here's the C shape. And typically, you're going to slide. You're going to tick, you're going to play that third fret of the B string and slide up. And this is going to be a downstroke. So we got to get that slide pretty smooth. A lot of people when they slide, they they have this tendency to just get caught on the fret. Either they're pressing too hard, or something else is going on, and they hear it sounds like this. And I just can't get there. So we want to aim for the back edge of the third fret to the back edge of the fifth fret. And if you have dots, then it's just these first two dots here. Now I can see the dots up here, and you can't see them here, but typically most guitars, uh, they'll have a dot on the third and the fifth fret. Uh, some of them don't even have a third fret dot, they'll have a fifth fret. So whichever way yours is set up, if it's a Martin, most likely it has a third uh, fret dot there. So you're gonna aim with your, since we're on the C, we're gonna aim and extend our ring finger here and slide up for the third to the fifth fret. And then we're gonna come down, and, and, and this is a little shape here. Think of that as kinda of like a mini C. That's gonna be a down and then up on the uh, third fret here, the E string. And then, okay? So right now we have this these uh, notes here that we can use. It's going to be first finger on these two frets, I mean on these two strings, the B and the E, um, and the ring finger is going to be on the B and the E of the fifth fret. And that's the first half of it. So practice the down, down, up, down, up, down, up. Three to five, three, five, three. Okay, so now we can we can end this a couple different ways, and what I what I hear all the time, and what you've probably heard, is this little uh, lick here. Okay, now that's a very good introduction into what I call open string transitions, and if you'll check out uh, bluegrassguitarcentrals.com/webisodes. Uh, which is uh, my course I just released not long ago, um, the second in that series. And that's webisodes uh, three and four, which deal with open string transitions and uh, I think picking. And that's a very, very good uh, introduction into open string transitions uh, if you decide to work on that. And what that does is that allows you to go from place to place really easily with the use of an open string. And what we're doing here is doing just that. <laughs> That open E that we're hitting allows me to shift. It's still ringing as I shift. Okay, 
so it's ringing. So I could do that with a, a G and I'll just use a G for an open string transition. So that G allows me to come down here, okay? So bluegrass players use that a lot. And once again, that, that website is bluegrassguitarcentrals.com slash webisodes. It's a, I think this particular webisodes three and five, three and four is like an hour and a half long and it's uh, I think it's only fifteen dollars right now um, once it once I get the next webisodes out they will be uh, raised up to twenty five dollars I don't know if you are on my um, newsletter or not my bluegrass guitar essentials uh, mailing list but uh, I do all those updates and release those immediately as soon as they happen so that they have first come first serve basis but since you're one of my students I'll let you in on that It'll be in another week or two that um, I'll probably be releasing webisodes four and, or five and six, which the previous webisodes will be going up to $25. So definitely take advantage of that if you're interested in learning about your picking and your open string transitions. That way you can learn that on your own time as well. It comes with a, uh, a nice ebook uh, with tabs and everything that you need to know concerning those open string transitions. So that's bluegrassguitarcentral.com slash webisodes. And uh, you'll see all the information on that. But anyway, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go down, up, down, E string, up. And then instead of coming back down to this previous note, we're going to come to the note b before that. So that's going to be in the fourth fret. And that gives us that weird dissonance sound. Kind of like Twilight Zone or Jaws or something like that. That little half step. A little weird, eerie, mysterious, you know, grating on our nerves fingernails on a chalkboard sound. But since it happens so fast and it's only doing one time, it sounds really bluesy and sounds really, you know, country-ish almost. And that is... So that middle finger comes down. So we've got these two fingers for these two frets, the three and the five, and then we have the middle finger coming down for the fourth fret on the B string. And that might be something you can just practice there. up on the E, down on the E, C, down, up, down on the B, up on the open E, and then put your first finger down here. Now once again, when I get here, the rest of my fingers make the C shape. So you can practice this, and then practice this, and kind of break it down, separate it. That's all down alternate picking. Down, up, down, up, and then down, up, down, up, down. And you put it all together. And the cool thing about this is you can actually add this this lick plus the other lick, and you've got just enough space to do that when we get to that C. So here's how we would insert that one. screen keeps uh, fading out on me. Actually, you don't have enough time to do both of them unless you lengthen how long it takes before you get back to the... like that. And that kind of happens to happen after you hit the... So it's kind of a tricky one. C. You may have to actually come down with your pinky and then resume playing this with these two fingers. So it would be okay so then you let go of this whenever you're moving now So let's try it again.
Okay, so now it, it might be hard for you to do this at first, but you still want to practice this lick because there's other songs in C where you can use this lick. If I was playing something else, you know. Um, I'll fly away or something. There will be times where you can use that lick. And that's actually one of the licks that I use in that open string transitions webisode. There's an extension of that where you can come even higher and bring it back down. So it's a uh, it's very, very uh, cool little course. But basically that's what I want to go over today is two extra licks that will start you working on that alternate picking and that will get you outside that comfort zone. So we're kind of extending our reach here just a little bit and you know trying to break that fear, that fear barrier of saying, well, now now that I'm moving out of this comfort zone, I don't know what, what where I'm at. Because I know this chord, I know this chord, I know this chord, but I don't know what anything else. And a lot of people, that's their problem. They have, they have a fear of going outside of the first three or fourth frets. Uh, because beyond that, they don't have a clue what's going on. So... Uh, as we move on and as we gradually get into this, as I see progressing and see how far you're going, that will let me know how far I can actually go beyond here and kind of work with you on that. But we're just now getting started in that. But the important thing is get that alternate picking down, uh, practice it slowly. And if you missed the first one, like I did just then a minute ago, notice I didn't stop and go. I didn't stop my flow. If you miss it, just continue on like this. Notice you didn't hear the, that low. Just continue it on. And then eventually you'll get to where you can do it. That's one another one important tip is that most people, when they miss something, they'll stop and then try it again and then continue on the song. You don't want to do that. You want to continue on the song because if you stop, then it limits your, your ability. It kind of kills your rhythm here. And if I did, you know, and then stopped and then tried it again, that would kill a whole song. For one thing, that trained you to uh, um, be ready uh, on the spot. Because if you're playing live, the other musicians aren't going to stop <laughs> if you mess up. And if you stop, you're going to be totally lost. So you just keep going. Keep going through it. Because what that also forces you to do is kind of correct. And later on, when you come back around to that uh, lick, you'll remember that and your brain will kind of like subconsciously cause your hand to over to correct that. Uh, so a lot of this stuff happens subconsciously, but don't stop even if you mess up the lick. Always remember that the, the last note's a downstroke. So if you get messed up, go to the last stroke. Like if I went, oh, but and I totally missed all of the notes. If I just messed up completely, I just go back to the last note of the downstroke because that's where everything resets. That's where it starts over. Now notice that it was the first two times I messed that up, but now my brain's setting my hand exactly where I need to come up and hit that open E string. So definitely practice those uh, this week. Work on that. Uh, next week, I'll continue to think of what we can do as far as like uh, maybe making this song sound even better. Or I may even just start on a new song. Um, there's not much else that we can do on Wildwood Flower. But it will be nice to do another song in the C shape so that we can figure out any other things we can do in C. Or it may be even nice to go to a G shape so that we can try to figure out what all we can work with on a G, okay? Uh, another thing that I failed to mention earlier is when I was talking about how we've learned so many things, another thing we've already talked about is the first fret pull-off. Okay, so that is very useful in all kinds of bluegrass. So I'll decide, you know, kind of give, get an idea maybe this week and uh, think about what to do for the next lesson. Uh, it'll be another video lesson. 
So that's it for this week. It's a 30 minute lesson. And I'm gonna go ahead and it looks like uh, there's no problems with it freezing up or anything. We'll go ahead and uh, stop the video, get it uploaded and send it out to you. Thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next video next week. And I hope you're having a, um, a good time with these videos. If you have any problems, just shoot me an email. Uh, the email should be the email link should be in the uh, uh, video below, but you probably already have my email address anyway because we've been corresponding back and forth by email. So if you have any questions or any problems with this particular video, shoot me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later, Levi. Have a great week and enjoy some bluegrass picking.